And uh, today our topic is about science, and you know science is a very uh, well-known games. Uh, the Muslims they play always in order to convince us that their God, He is the God of science. Actually, for sure, Allah is the God of science. I mean, one of the reasons convinced me that Allah is a true God is His science. So today we are going to see how scientifically the Islamic science. You see, the Muhammadan, they might agree that there's like a thousands of mistakes of science in the Quran. But let us see if they can find one of them. I mean, it's not a mistake. Can you find one thing your God, Allah, he said is not mistake in the Quran? As long as you, you know, Muslims have thousands of videos, if not millions, about scientific miracle in the Quran. How truthful those videos what is the purpose of them the purpose is let us fool those people who do not know arabic and fabricate a new meaning so we can make them believe that this is a true god speaking about things nobody knows but this lie cannot live for long because we have all the tools to expose it. Hello? Hello, Christian Prince. Yes, my friend. Hello, hello. Uh, this is Joseph Colden, um, Christian, um, and I left Islam. I converted to Islam. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Finally got to speak to you. I've watched some of your content for a long time, um, and thank you to your work and uh, others like David Wood. I did the research for myself, what you say in the Hadith, although you have an advantage, you speak full Arabic to me, uh, than me. It was absolutely fantastic and I left Islam. I embraced the Lord Jesus Christ and I pray that other Muslim Muslims uh, listen to what you would say and absolutely believe it as well and look it up in their own books. Um, I owned the Hadith as well, so I just wanted to give you a quick call and encourage you and say God bless you for what you do. Thank you. But what, 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 uh, tell me a little bit as uh, long now Muslims calling. I mean, why you decided to leave Islam? What happened? So, um, I think it was many things. I, I started to realize that when I was in the masjid and conversations after the khutbah or whatever it was that day were happening about Muhammad, they would read from um, a series of hadith. And I found these hadith very disturbing because I had converted to Islam. I had not grown up in the religion. And I, I, I found that often when Muhammad is portrayed in, in many of the hadiths, I found that my I wouldn't do half of the stuff that he did myself. You know, um, the the marriage to Aisha was was disturbing, but by by no means no means was that the most disturbing thing. Uh, some of the gross things as well, like Aisha wa washing stains off Muhammad's clothes, and you know, just some of the weird stuff. I, I started to think, wow, the the violence in Islam, and how at the time this is just I, I converted fourteen years ago, say. Um, before the Islamic State and the Levant and all of how, that. How old, how old you were when you were converted to Islam? 18. I was 18. 18. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what happened. They, they target young ones. They fool them. Yeah. But uh, uh, can you start from the beginning, as long as we don't have any Abdul to challenge us, can you tell me how they converted you to Islam? Yeah, um, so I had, I had met someone I worked with who was a surgeon and um, I worked in the tools and instruments that provided uh, instruments for surgery and we I, I began a friendship and he had started to talk about Muhammad and I'd been to university and you know started to, I knew a tiny tiny bit about Islam but not that much and he had told me how Muhammad was um, foretold in the Bible and he would give me verses like Deuteronomy 18, the very Zakig Nike type arguments. Hmm. But at the time, it, it was, I, I didn't know my Bible extremely well. So it was enough to, uh, to start to get me to think about it. He invited me to the mosque 
and he really ramped up the effort, efforts, him and other Muslims at the time. And I, I was looking for something in my life. You've got to understand, people who convert to Islam are looking for something in all the wrong places. I had had an extremely bad relationship. Uh, I hated women, in, in, in effect. And um, I, I saw that in Islam, the brothers uh, would say in the masjid, oh, you know, in Islam, we can have four wives, and, and that that's not why I converted, but it was definitely this, um, what's the word, the um, the overriding factor that in Islam, men are dominant, and women are meek and mild, and they serve men. Uh, you know, it was, it was kind of, I was lulled into it, and I really fell for it, to see that Islam had this pure book um, in Arabic that had been never been tampered with, ne never been changed. It was a whole host of stories and things that uh, they did that got me thinking, wow, you know, everyone's a brother. Everyone's an Aki. You're, you're a brother in, in, their deen, in the deen together. You stand in line together and, and pray. You know, there's no uh, king. There's no... The king has to stand in line. It, it's, it's sold as a package. And I really liked that at the time being 18 years old and um thinking probably with the uh, different parts of, of myself and muhammad sounded great muhammad sounded like a mercy to mankind how how he know, sounded like this how he sounded like this for you they used to give hadith like um hmm. how muhammad would feed uh, uh feed water to a dog and and even though he's afraid of dogs, or but Muhammad he know, ordered to kill the dogs. Hadith. Guys, imagine Muhammad. He said, if a woman she gave water to the dog, she'll go to heaven. But he is the one who ordered to kill the dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very, yeah, yeah. You know, you know the, the the type of hadith that they give to make Muhammad seem almost uh, like an angel. Mm -hmm. You know, they they really change who he is as a person and. What I've grown to believe is that actually they believe it. They believe it and they make others believe it as well. They don't read Muhammad from what's in the pages of their own books. Uh, so I, I went and I met another a Muslim girl and we were very, very quickly put together to, to uh, cement her. She was another convert and it, uh, you know I'm English, so she's another English convert. So they put us together thinking that we're going to have Muslim, white Muslim children. You know, they, they have this dream, in the UK at least, hmm. that they're going to convert everyone to the to Al-Islam. They're going to convert everyone, and Take eventually Sharia hmm. will be the dominant force, uh, the dominant political force in the country. And they start with winning people's minds and getting them in the faith. That girl now... She wears a niqab. Her mother, her mother speaks to me, but she doesn't speak to her own daughter because her daughter nearly joined ISIS. Mm. You know, they, 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 I know people who I would speak to back in the day before um, ISIS was a thing, a big thing, that have gone to fight for the regime. You know, it, it, so you tell me, is Islam peaceful? Well, why is it that everything quite early on your salvation is based entirely your best the best salvation you can get is to die as a jihad that's the only way that your sins will be taken care of you know um is martyrdom i think i think i i became disillusioned you know after so many years to try and find this muhammad that just did not exist he's just not there uh, I, you want Muhammad to be like Jesus, and that's what mu Muslims think. He is like Jesus, but he's absolutely not a speck on his sandal. And I came to say that I know the true and living Christ. You know, it took a long journey to get there, but yeah, I, I just became disillusioned. But the one thing that I am sure of is Muslims believe what they say about Muhammad. And it's up to people like yourself and, and others now on YouTube doing this fantastic work to uh, to get them to see that it's not true. It's just simply not true. And to stop lying to themselves 
and see what's in the hadith. You you know, you speak Arabic and I've seen uh, Muslims themselves argue about the way you pronounce something. It's a tiny mispronunciation because they can't argue with what you bring, which is the truth <laughs> about Muhammad. Um, I, I learned that early on. I used to read the hadith and my wife is a born Muslim. We had an Islamic marriage. Um, you know, we were married Islamically and, and all of that business. And she's born into the religion. And when she used to kind of cop, look at my study notes, she started to see some some weird stuff that, you know, I'd wrote down, say, Muhammad at um, Zainab, the, the issue of Zainab. Zainab, uh, he looked at her and he was lustful after her. Um, in fact, I was debating one the other day. Um, this, what was the guy? Honey, where... Uh, the honey issue, I forgot it now. Um, he looked, he looked at Zainab and thought, "Oh, you know, she's she's quite nice." And he, a verse in the Quran comes down that gives him the justification for sleeping, for having Zainab as his wife. And Muslims will flat out deny that that's the reason that that verse is in the Quran. And I always ask, "Well, what? Well, then, what is the reason for that being in there? So that you know that if you ever get into a situation where you fancy your adopted son's wife, that you know it's halal for you to marry marry her. That's the only reason that God, in His divine word, gave that verse. He could have said any other thing, like, "Don't kill each other. Don't harm. Don't harm each other. You know, don't rob from people." But He decided to say, don't marry your adopted son's wife if you fancy her. Uh, yeah, you know, actually, like even, that. even the tafsir says it clearly that when Muhammad, he went to the, his own son's uh, house, he flirted with the wife. He flirted with her while she is married in the house yeah. of the husband. He went to, you know, look at this filthy man. he been given permission because he is the father to enter into a house because he is the father, correct? Yeah. So... It is not lawful for a Muslim to enter a house when the husband is not there. Muhammad, what he did, he took advantage. And look at look at the double standard of this filthy man. He claimed that mm. Allah, he told him, it's not right to adopt. So all this yeah. time, Allah could not make a verse to say it's not right to adopt until he wanted to have sex with this woman. You know? Mm. And how many, I mean, and, and why even like, you have many wives. Why you want to have sex with this woman specifically? Why Allah want to give her to you? I mean, don't you have enough? What that well, the hadith says that she she was a beautiful woman. Exactly. You know, and even exactly. Says, oh, you know, marry her. I'll, I'll give it to you. Yeah. You know, and, and Muslims will say, "See how gentle Muhammad was." He said, "Keep your wife. Keep your wife." <laughs> you know, like like it's some generous thing to do when he no, but he, the hadith, he, hear the hypocrisy because. How you say to him, keep your wife, because Allah saying to him, you see, the, suppose the, the verse in the Quran say clearly, Allah saying to him, why you say to him, keep your wife, when Allah told you that she is yours? So imagine instead of Allah rebuking him, saying shame on you, that you are a hypocrite, in the house of the man, you just flirt with the wife, and now you are saying to him, keep your wife, which one is you? The one who want her, or the one who is saying keep? So the liar is claiming that nothing happened. And actually, yeah. this guy, he never asked to divorce his wife until his wife, she told him that your father was here and he flirted with me. And even the even, even the, the, the seer says, for fatina zaid, which means, it's like in, in Arabic, we say, for fatina, which means like, he, he got it, you know, he got it, like suddenly, oh, bong. Yeah, this, guy, yeah. this guy, he want my wife. So he went there and he said to him, oh, please allow me to divorce her. And here you notice, a Muslim man, he do not need a permission from the prophet to divorce his wife, correct? Correct. So yeah. why he is Tell going? Him, yeah. Why he is going to Muhammad, asking for permission because Muhammad is still his father. Yeah. Correct. Well, it, yeah, absolutely. He's um, he he knows that Muhammad, when the prophet of Islam wants something, he's going to get it, and exactly. uh, he's he's wanting to please his father. Exactly. It, it's. He, uh, Muhammad caused the divorce. Um, you know, it's it, it's there. And I, the, the issue that I was talking about uh, with a Muslim the other day <clears> is <throat> when Muhammad was sleeping with um, Mary the Copt and um, in Hafsa's bed, 
uh, he gave me a hadith that he said, oh, this is from Aisha, which said uh, the Quran, I'm sure it's Quran 61 or 60, uh, that I've not got the verse off the top of my head. Hmm. He said, uh, where, where it says um, about pleasing his wife, uh, you seek to please your wife, hmm. um, you know. Uh, he gives this hadith where it says, oh. Yeah, it's chapter of the tahrim yeah. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've not got the, the verse to, to hand. Verse number one. Uh, yeah, so he says, oh, you know, I'll seek to please your wife. <clears throat> and the verse that he, the hadith that he gave was saying, Aisha says it was about honey. Um, and I gave many of the hadith and evidence saying it's not about honey. This is about Muhammad sleeping with Mary the Copt in Habs' bed. Um, exactly. you, you know the, the verse that I'm talking about and the, the hadith that I'm referencing. Not very well, but I'm trying to think of it off the top of my head. Yeah, this is in their books. This is what this this is what their books saying, not us. We were not there. Yeah. The only information we have about Muhammad is what Muslims says about Muhammad. And the funny, the second yeah. you quote for them what they themselves say about Muhammad, they refuse it. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they they pick and choose which ones they want, which yeah. is why so I my, so my, that my friend. What, whole, uh, okay, so you decide to leave Islam by yourself, or somebody help you? Um, to understand no, I that I, this... I, I did it. I did it by myself. Okay, my, good. So, what about your wife now? Wife. Your wife, she. You said she is born as a Muslim, and uh, now she. Uh, now she gave her life to the Lord Jesus. I'm into and, that. Uh, we both. Uh, we both are Christians. Uh, so yeah, it. It was a long road to to kind of seeing the disillusionment with Muhammad and seeing as well that many Muslims are actually sad. They're very very sad. They, they have this Islam that's meant to be uh, from heaven and perfect. It, you know, today your religion has been perfected for you. Mm -hmm. But really, the religion is so far from perfect. It's obliterated the word perfect. It's not. It's horrible. And they're sad. And I, I, I used to see this in the mosque. Apart from, say, the, the jihadis that you used to get in the mosque. Um, and, and every mosque has them, by the way. Uh, especially here in the UK, the terrorist sympathizers that want to establish Sharia because, you know, they're, they're a bit crazy like that. You have a lot of people that are disillusioned with Islam and they're leaving in droves. You know, it, it's weird. In, in the masjid, you, you used to try and find out how much, uh, how much the other Muslim believed what they were saying. And it was almost a competition to see uh, who believe what they were saying and many many don't uh, and my, my friend, my friend from the UK uh, people yeah, asking I've me uh, my friend people asking me for your channel so if you don't mind when you finish if you can post your name uh, I'm, I know you cannot post a link but you can uh, show us your name in YouTube so people can click and subscribe to your channel because uh, yeah. there's many they like to subscribe to your channel, maybe, you know, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Th I mean, I, I just wanted to, you know, thank you and, and say your work and what you're doing online um, is fantastic. I've seen, so I, I just for a joke, me and my wife put on a Fadi response and we just sit there and have a chuckle at it because it's it really is laughable, the fact that they can't deal with any of the real claims. And I used to go to the scholars, Sheikh Ajaz and other sheikhs, and ask them the questions that, you know, I would say find in the books. And I'd say, why is this in the Quran? Why is this there? They had no answers. And in fact, they used to try and change the question that I had asked them and then say that they'd answered it. And I thought, wow, even the scholars, do the scholars know it. But they just don't want to tell the people it, and they they they're the gatekeepers. They're the gatekeepers because a Muslim will say when he asks questions, go to uh, he will say to you, go to the scholars, go to the scholars, and you go to the scholars, and the scholars have no answers, and they um they can't keep people from leaving Islam. Praise God, and I hope we, you know we we as Christians are willing to have them because I I come to realize how much I needed Jesus. And how much Jesus is the only one that can save, the only one that is that could ever save. You know, it's uh, yeah. If you my channel is just my name, Joseph, and then Joseph Colden, which is C O C O L D O N. Okay. You know, so if you check that out. 
if you can just after you finish just uh, say hello I'm this good. is Jay, uh, you know in the chat and then people they can click at your name and they can subscribe to your channel well my friend thank you very much for ha having you I'm, uh, I'm happy that you left Islam I'm happy for our sister in Christ your wife I pray that Lord the Lord will bless you and bless your family and protect you and the you know sometime the devil he think he hunted one of our kids but our kid he went there and now he he's hunted the, he's hunting the devil and not only that he is yes. saving from Amen. the house of the devil many as would happen to your wife so uh, you know let us let us use your experience so uh, uh, young people at the age of 18 like when you were eating yourself they will not be yeah. hunted by the trap of the garbage of Muhammad for this is a trap Amen. of the devil so you need to help them and you need to use and warn people about how they try to fool you like they use yeah. videos about science as we are showing etc and but yes. but, but islam is far away from science islam far away from dignity islam far away from peace islam far away from anything they claim anything they claim actually here we go Everything my sky is open they, they, they use the science argument i'll leave with the fact that they use they, they used to give me the books i've kept every single one of them uh, in in my cupboard uh, i've got all of the books that i was given over the years i've bought just so that you know, I can pull them out and say to people, this is what their books say, this is what they've tried to use, and this is how false it is, and how, you know, when they say science, uh, the sperm is between this and, or, or the world was um, round and things like that, it's it's garbage, it is absolute garbage, it's a, a, a fraud. The, of fact, the fact that Quran says it clearly, the earth is a flat, the earth is a flat, and Muhammad, he made it clear that the, 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 the sperm stay alive for 40 nights. 40 days and I can show it right now you know we are we don't make things up you see they make things up and they are because they are following the, the, the devil we don't yeah here we go it's in the front of us he says that you are gathered inside your mother as a sea as a semen excuse me for 40 40 days as a semen for 40 days and right. then another, another 40 days for the same period as a, a piece of a blood and then for uh, for other you know Muslim, do you see it? This is your Muslim translation, but this is not mine. The creation of any one of you is like is this, that semen is collected in the womb of the mother for 40 nights. So let me introduce myself. I'm a Christian prince and I was doing a tourist in my mother womb for 40 nights, watching TV and Amazon Prime. Because it was Corona time, I could not get out, but I can do. And I was a semen at that time, 40 nights. I mean, who in the world want to believe in such a garbage? And if you say to them, do you agree with this? You say, oh, no, brother, this is a weak hadith, but this is Sahih, this is Sahih yeah. Muslim. You know? So... They, 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 they've tried it all, and I'll let you continue your live stream, but, uh, be, you know, be encouraged that the work that you're doing is great, and, um, you know, people, people are seeing the disillusionment with Islam, and they need to look closer at Christ, and see the truth that only he is all right brother i'm i'm gonna go okay thank you my friend god take bless care. take care bye, bye god bless bye -bye. this is a great example how you can your son can be a victim of this cult this is why you need to let your children learn don't just take your your knowledge from here and just keep it for yourself you need to share it with your family so they will not fool you. This person is a victim of the society, by the way, because the society did not provide him education about this cult. So he go to work, he go to school, he go to street, and then he meet people who they start fooling him, and he don't know. I mean, how I can blame him? Do you remember the story of the 18, 16 years old? He was 15, actually. He, they smuggle him from Australia. Imagine Australia. Look how powerful they are as a gang, mafia. They smuggle the kid from Australia. He appeared in Syria. A week after he committed suicide, bombing in a car. His, his father, he noticed that this is his son in TV. Where is the family? Where is the family? How your son ain't dead? And now you just notice that your son is not there. This poor guy, 16 years old kid, pure kid, I can call him pure, is a victim of the devil. 
but he's victim of his family. His family did not teach him. You see, you have a duty to teach your children. Otherwise, your children can come against you. The devil will use them to fight you. And this is the purpose of this conversion thing. They want to make those children, those, those English people, they want them to be the enemy of their own country. So they can take over the country by using them. They do not need to import a terrorist from, from Afghanistan or from Syria or Iraq. No, no, we will make a local ones here. We convert them, we brainwash them, and you go and carry a knife and say, Allahu Akbar. If Muhammad is a prophet, you see when they say to you, science. If Muhammad is the one who said that, and he is the one who said that, this is Sahih Muslim, this is very authentic, Muhammad is a fraud. According to Muhammad, the creation of a child, it takes only 120 days. And you are in the mother womb for, actually, it's, it doesn't say womb, by the way, it says button. Button means in the stomach, or a belly. إِنَّ خَلْقَ أَحَدَكُمْ يُجْمَعُ فِي بَطْنِ أُمِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلًا how would that happen as a sperm and that all of us we know the sperm never live more maximum five six days what for the for the uh... and muhammad he stuck with numbers by the way that's it alibaba and the 40 thieves muhammad he stuck with number which is mentioned in the bible 7 40 uh, 70 time you know all those numbers by the way is a stolen Jesus says something, Muhammad, he take it, he start repeating it. But he add his own fiction lies. So he lied the number, Jesus said, he will use it. If Jesus says seven, Muhammad will say seven. If Jesus says 40, Muhammad will say 40. If Jesus says 70, Muhammad will say 70. I will show you an example, a clear example of the fraud of Muhammad, additional to the science, which is a joke. A clear evidence that Muhammad is nothing but a fraud. Read carefully. And this is what? This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Muslim cannot say to us it's a lie. They cannot. Sahih al-Bukhari is the most authentic book after the Quran. The second, the woman, she said that this is the punch of the grave. Muhammad, he learned from the Jews just today. After that, Muhammad, he never prayed to Allah without saying, I seek refuge by Allah from the punishment of the grave. And since that day, whatever Muhammad is saying, he repeat the same, I seek refuge by Allah from her. That's it, a Jew, if a Jew she said that, it must be true. And then Muhammad, he learned from the Jews that the punishment of the grave is because of urine. And look what, exactly he said the same. The Jews, they say that God, he punish you from urine. If urine touch you, this is what they say to their kids so they can stay clean. Muhammad, the fool, he took it. He make it as a teaching of his God. Imagine God will punish you for urine. In the grave. Christian Prince. In April 16, 1900. At that time, you were... 95 years old and little urine touch your foot and today i'm going to punish you torture you for that and christian prince please allah please it was little urine please no it was a lot of urine it was a drop of urine please allah forgive me it is just a urine yes there's things I don't like in life. Pepsi Cola, Starbucks, and urine. Please, Allah, I did not go to Starbucks and I did not drink Pepsi Cola. But you did urine, and urine touched your feet. Allah, please forgive me. I will never do it again. I know you will not do it again, you idiot. You are dead now. Okay, Allah, so what we will do now? I'm going to torture you. Get ready. Okay, Allah, how are you going to torture me? And I am dead. <clears throat> um, 
Hmm. <clears throat> Hold on. I'm going to call Zachary Nayak. Tadadun, tadadun. Tadadun, tadadun. Tadadun, tadadun. Zakir, I am Allah. Praise be to Allah. You are calling me something? Me, me, myself? Exactly. A guy, his name is a Christian prince. He did urine. I'm going to torture him and he got me in the corner. He said, how are you going to torture me? And I am dead. So what I should say to him? First of all, the answer is very simple. I don't give Allah you do as you wish. Mm. Okay, hold on. Let me say that to him. I am Allah and I do as I will. <laughs> Allah, but, <laughs> but you do as you will, no problem. But nothing left of me. I mean, don't you see? I don't, have no, I don't feel anything. Touch me. I feel nothing. Mm. Hold on. Zakir, did you hear what he say? No, Allah, I'm not in the phone. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of cult and garbage, man? You are in the grave and now Allah is going to torture you? For what? For urine. May Allah urinate you. This is God. And this is science, by the way. This is science. Pure science. Urine. We seek forgiveness from Allah for the urine we did in our life. Allah will not torture in the grave for raping women, children, killing, theft. No, He will torture you for wrong. urine, brother. This is God. This is God, the God of science. Uh, Muhammad Qadir, he said, we reject the hadith, go against the Quran. That is a stupid lie, my friend. Do you reject the hadith about muta? The Quran says you do muta. Actually, all the sunnah is against the Quran. All the abrogated verses in the Quran can be found mostly in the sunnah, not in the Quran. Where we can find the stoning to death? Is it in the Quran? So if you refuse anything against Quran, then you should not follow Muhammad. Follow Quran only, and that will make you not a Muslim. So don't lie to yourself. Don't fool yourself. There is tons of verses, tons in the Quran. You are not allowed to follow them no more. And how we don't follow them? Because we follow the Hadith. Uh, Muhammad Kader saying it is evil to say we love our enemy instead of oh, this is because he is following Shaitan. Satan teaching him that, so what we can do for him, his God is Satan. He taught him to hate everybody because in Islam, everyone is not a Muslim, is your enemy. If you go in the Quran, you will find it clearly in the Quran saying you cannot even be friend, even with your family members, your mother, your father, your brothers from your blood. If you are a true Muslim. So, according to Islam, everyone who is not a Muslim is my enemy, including my family. Chapter 58, verse number 22. It says, Thou will not find any people who believe in Allah and the last day loving those who resist Allah and His Messenger, even though they are their families and their sons. It doesn't say, by the way, their, I mean, just it says their fathers and their and their brothers and their sons and their tribe. A true Muslim, he should not love anyone, for he is following the devil and the proof in front of you. So if this Qadr, he called you brother, that's mean he is a fraud. He's not a Muslim. He's a false Muslim. You cannot call them brother. According to the Quran, only Muslims are brothers. <clears throat> uh, 
Anyway, I think we have enough for today. I pray for the safety of all of us. I pray for the safety of the Muslims, the Christians, the Hindus, the Buddhas. We pray for the safety of all mankind. We pray for every lost soul. God do not need this garbage to prove himself. God, he make miracles. And miracle is miracle. Jesus, he made the blind see. That's it. That is a miracle. Prophets of God, they came with miracles. Not a single one of them says, let us calculate numbers. That is very silly. And miracles is something nobody can do. Not something anyone can do. Can you make the blind see? No, you cannot. Maybe you will make a surgery, but that is not a miracle. One of the funny things the Muslims they say about Jesus do all those amazing miracles. They say, in the time of Jesus, the uh, uh, science was advanced. What science was advanced? People, they are dying. And until now, there's people, they are blind. A person who is born as a blind is born as a blind. Jesus did not give him medicine. What science was advanced? In the time of Jesus, science was advanced. What about today? Muhammad came 600 years after Jesus. Science was advanced at, at that time. 600 years after. So it was advanced in the time of Jesus, but it's not advanced 600 years after. So why Muhammad don't have any of the miracles of Jesus? Because simply he's a fraud. When Jesus said to the man who cannot walk, did he give him a medicine? No, he said to him, carry your bed and walk. He did not say, oh, this is a, this is a bill, eat from a three dime a day, and then you will be fine. The way the Muslim try to explain why the Messiah is amazing in his power is funny and stupid. But they are desperate, bankrupt followers of a bankrupt cult. Nothing of the Messiah he did because he compared to science. And it's not even scientific. You cannot make a blind man see by putting a spit in his eyes. You cannot make a person who cannot walk by just saying to him, go and walk. You cannot heal a woman who is bleeding just by touching your, 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 your dress. That is not science. That is a miracle. Muhammad, he was able to do nothing. And then he will open the book of the Hadith and you will find tons of stories about miracles Muhammad did. But the Quran says clearly, Muhammad have zero. We refrain from sending miracles, the Quran says. وَمَا مَنَعَنَا what? وَمَا مَنَعَنَا Nothing refrain us from sending miracles except people from the, the previous generation they refuse to accept them. Chapter 17, verse number 59. Allah refrain from giving miracle to Muhammad and the excuse, you will not believe it, which is false. Because we Christian, we believe in the miracle of Jesus and we believe in every single miracle happened by the prophets before Jesus. So that was a clear, false excuse. I want to say thank you guys for being here, staying with me all this time. It's not easy to sit all those hours, but I pray to the Lord to open our eyes, to keep us safe, and to forgive us for our sin when we do so, and we repent to Him, and we ask for His forgiveness. Thank you. God bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. No matter how false, try to prove itself to be true. We always prove it wrong. Thank you. God bless.